we need to talk. Now, I don't always do reviews and quite frankly, I wasn't going to get into it, but sometime in April, I was on the Wish app and I had decided that I would look at some of their art supplies because I had heard they were doing some pretty good art products. Most of the time I work in watercolor, as you know, and I have been mainly working in solid pan. I'd like to move forward into tubes because I feel that the tubes allow me a lot more liberty to be aggressive, to mix more colors at a time, to mix larger quantity of a color in uh, my ceramic dish that you guys see me use. I happened to cross what appeared to be uh, 18 tubes in a set of Windsor and Newton watercolors on the Wish app. Now, I was as shocked as anyone else, and we've heard the horror stories of, say, Jeffree Star Cosmetics, in which the images were the same from his website, the product was different, and quite frankly, we have no idea what was in that product. But the Windsor and Newton product seemed somewhat legit and I kind of because it's not for application to the body it's not a supplement to be ingested I wondered if maybe this was going to be a lower grade dupe so that maybe it didn't have the light fastness or maybe it didn't use natural pigments as uh, many of the Windsor Newton paints use um, so I decided to test it out and the results are shocking. Uh, so what you're gonna see here is you're gonna see me go ahead and using the Arteza 100% cotton watercolor paper. I think it's the professional line, something like that. Usually when I'm making color cards, I just grab for this pad because it's inexpensive and I'm not that married to it. And it does have um, a lot of texture to it. So you can kind of play around with that. But what I'm doing in between each color is I'm dipping my synthetic brush, and I used a size six, uh, into dirty water uh, with paint in it, and then into clean tap water. These are both tap waters that I um, put into old votive glasses. First off, the color range is a little different, and that is because the Windsor & Newton 20 set of tubes that you get from Windsor & Newton, the brand, um, are smaller. They're five milliliters. And the Windsor & Newton that you find on Wish are 10. Um, so right off the bat, the Wish ones had less colors to choose from, but I could tell right away they were nice and vibrant. One thing I noticed right off the bat was because I started with white and then went to lemon yellow, if you notice, I put a permanent marker, a Sharpie marker line down each swatch before painting it. And that was to see if there was going to be some white in some of these lighter colors that would cover over. I don't really like the gouache type look of watercolors when they become opaque. And with the Windsor & Newton from Wish, I found that in Chinese white, lemon yellow, and flesh tint which, whatever, um, can't win them all, I guess. The colors in both sets were stacked pretty saturated. I, I, could, I could pull one dip of the Windsor & Newton from Wish paint across, you know, a three inch block, and I could do the same with the American version from the retailer. When I was first working with them, I could not see a lot of difference in them as they were wet. Now that I'm looking at them dry, the Wish brand is more consistent. Now I have a theory here, I have a theory. My theory is that the Wish, if, if these are in fact fake, the Wish watercolors have synthetic pigments in them. I can't access the ingredients list on these, um, but 
when I look at the card now, the Windsor and Newton, although they're not as bright and as hyper color as the Wish tubes, they do have a nicer tone to them. They do have a nicer hue. Now, some of the colors match up perfectly. You have lemon yellow, crimson, and you have a violet that looks a lot like the Windsor Newton purple. But some of the differences that I noticed right away, and maybe this is translation or maybe this is intentional, is that things like ultramarine are the same, but when you get into cadmium red in the Windsor and Newton pack, it's just called brilliant red on the Wish pack. Now, I don't know if that's translation from Chinese, Here's the other thing. Both sets are produced in China. So this could be coming out of the same production facility if um, they want. And I know that different countries have different restrictions on how you can sell products within those countries. This could possibly just be a difference in packaging. Both of them I thought were different enough for me to like them both in different ways. Um, I wouldn't use them together per se, but I felt there was a good balance in tones. Now, you get four blues, three greens in the Windsor & Newton original. In the Wish version, you get two blues and three greens, and um, the ones that you're missing out on, I feel like are the expensive ones. Prussian blue, um, I don't know. The black in the Windsor and Newton from Wish is a colder toned black, um, whereas lamp black in the Windsor and Newton original is very, very, to me, neutral, almost warm. Um, so yeah. So, at first I thought, of course the Wish is a lesser quality product because it's meant to be that way. Now, let's talk about price. So, Windsor & Newton, I picked up the uh, 25 milliliter tubes in a set. It looks like this. I got these at Michael's Arts and Crafts here in Sterling, Virginia. Um, beautiful packaging, you know, same kind of like chipboard packaging. It says made in China on the back. Um, the Windsor and Newton website and all their London addresses and all that stuff. Um, it's the Cotman watercolors line. I think that's like a step below the super high end stuff. Might be part of it. And then in the 18, uh, in the 18 watercolor set from Windsor & Newton on Wish, it has like a stamp here, like by appointment to HRH, the Prince of Wales, Manufacturers and Artist Materials of Windsor & Newton, London. I mean, this is weird to me. Obviously I can't translate anything on the back. It's giving you plenty of instruction on how to do it. And then the site it tells you to go to is windsornewton.com.cn, which if I look, this site does work. I just can't understand it. I don't know, you guys. This looks like it could be a legit site. Chinese simplified, let's say English. Oh my God. Okay, so I just used Google. Let's do screen record. So here I am on windsornewton.com.cn. There's a customer service hotline. Um, I've had the website translated via uh, Google to English. I mean, is this legit? I can't tell. I cannot. I have no idea. Gwin watercolor paint, professional grade, more. Let's click more. This is a lot of information 
for it to be a fake website. I just... But where do I shop? Watercolor paints. I can't read that. I can't read it. I see these tubes. Now these tubes here don't look anything like the ones that I purchased. Now see, looking at these tubes and these pans here on the site, these don't look anything like what I purchased. So they come in 10 milliliter tubes. The logo and everything looks the same. I just, I cannot figure this out. So here's the thing. I ordered these in April, April, like 10th or something like that. At first, it didn't make its first deadline to get to the house from Wish, so they refunded me the $12 shipping. The original product cost me $24. So in total, we're looking at 36.00. The five milliliter tubes at Michael's were something like $32, $33, and then I had a 20% off coupon. The Michael's one ended up being cheaper. Here's the thing, I did not receive the Wish version of these paints until August 8th. That is five months later than when I ordered it. And by that time, I had been refunded for the entire thing. Technically, these are more expensive with shipping and tax than these. Um, but looking on Amazon, these are way more expensive without a coupon. So you might as well go to Blick or Michaels, buy it in person, support those companies, and just use one of their 20% off coupons. All right, Blick, if you have a membership, you get 20% off anyways. So let's get into execution. I decided I was gonna do some um, illuminated manuscript and I wanted to use acanthus leaves. I went ahead and masked off um, pieces of paper. Uh, I ended up doing a letter S, and this is based off of a William Morris and Company uh, wallpaper called Acanthus Leaf. And basically I took a geometry out of the center of it, turned the repeat into a letter S, and then got rid of the background. I went ahead with the background and painted it in Viridian Green. Right off the bat, I could tell you that the real Windsor and Newtons, I was using way less paint to get more real estate painted. So the Windsor & Newton Cotman line was extremely efficient. So I did this in a couple of passes and I went back and forth between each one. I didn't paint each one separately. I painted them in layers together. So the Viridian Green, the Viridian Hue from the uh, Windsor & Newton Cotman line and then the Viridian Green from the Wish line. I would say that on the wish line, I was using much more paint to fill up the background. The control was great. The, um, the saturation was good, but the Winsor & Newton Cotman line, the original, blew away the wish line. Now, a couple of the attributes that showed up in this watercolor were things that are of personal choice for people. So I do think it's important to address them. Watering down these paints, the Wish brand is much smoother. It's much more, it gets much more into a flow state. If you look at how the Windsor & Newton Cotman line uh, spread, it's a lot more splotchy and gathery, and I'm guessing that has to do with the granulation of the paint. But I will say, comparatively, the amount of paint that I am using for these is easily four times as much of the Wish paint, which lends me to believe there's a lot less pigment in these than there are in the Windsor Newton Cotman line. I'm gonna do passes of the lightest colors uh, for each acanthus leaves. I broke them down into three tones of each color. So I'm doing a purple leaf, I'm doing a blue leaf, and I'm doing an orange leaf. Now, I did that because I knew I just picked those three colors. I figured they were the three colors that I felt related the most across brands. 
or within the brand, I don't know. And I wanted to keep it colorful. I wanted to keep it fun and it's not natural looking at all. Um, natural looking is an interesting statement because the Windsor and Newton Cotman line, the paints look more natural. They're not as childlike in the hue. And that is bizarre to me. What I noticed immediately right off the bat was while the lighter colors were drying, the Wish brand was almost staying the same color when it dried, which is like, that is the weirdest thing to me in watercolor. Like this, I'm painting such a light blue for these acanthus leaves and such a light orange. And when the Wish colors dried, which I was using a heating tool to dry them, it wasn't losing its saturation. I experienced the saturation loss a little bit more in the Windsor Newton Cotman line. And that's a typical attribute to watercolor paint. So I'm not really sure what is going on, but I'm guessing it maybe has to do with the content, whether it's synthetic or natural. But um, I was thinking these colors on the first pass would dry pretty much to almost an off-white, and they did not. After I started to mix more saturated versions of the color. I think I began with yellow okra. I added yellow okra to my tones to deepen them up a little bit. And then I added more of the original color. And then I might have dipped into burnt umber because burnt umber and yellow okra were in both palettes. So I let both passes dry. And then I decided that I would get in to my fine liner with a natural hairbrush. It's the only one I have. I, I prefer synthetic. And I would go in and do the dark color details. Now these are pretty much the undiluted version of the paint, but as you can see, I've mixed in a little bit. Um, both were really smooth, really easy to work with. But again, like, the wish stayed dark. Like, I don't understand how this happened. It works really great in the application of this, but I'm kind of shocked at how much information I lost in the Windsor and Newton Cotman line, which is kind of a bummer. So I'm gonna throw these up side by side and I'm gonna let you guys look at them. I don't wanna to take too much of your time with this. My final thought is that I think both are good. Of course, I wanna support a brand. I don't know if this is a copycat brand or if this is Windsor & Newton in China. This is how they sell. Now, they are produced in China, so I imagine they have the legality and all that worked out to where they can also sell in China and maybe there is a difference in ingredients required or allowed, but they don't feel cheaper, they don't act cheaper, you don't have the color selection, and you don't have the density of the pigment within them, and so I'm wondering if that it is a lower grade paint because it has more filler in it. If you watch my Watercolor 101, um, I discussed watercolor pricing, but lo and behold, with my coupon, the original Windsor & Newton from Amer well, from China, who that is sold at retailers here in America, was cheaper. Albeit I got a refund, but it was cheaper. So I'm gonna let you guys decide. I'm using a cool daytime light. Um, I'll put each up there and you can decide for yourself. I'm not gonna link the Wish version. It says it's sold out now, but if you're willing to wait five months to get paint from Wish that's a little bit more expensive and less efficient than the actual Windsor & Newton, um, go ahead. I'm, I am shocked at the results. I, I almost feel like if you want these, you should have both. I also don't know if supporting Wish is an ethical issue. I'm not, I, I have no idea what is the background of this Windsor & Newton. So anyways, um, check it out. If you guys purchased either of these, please let me know in the comments what you thought because I'm baffled and I love bougie paint. But thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any comments and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.